1,079 tracks so far handed out, you know, and I think there's more than that, but that's what we got counted so far. So, you know, praise the Lord, we're in a live church. We're not in a dead church. We're in a church that believes in spreading the gospel message that God has told us to do. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. You know, it's good that we have people who go out and witness to others. And uh, track month is just one way we can do that. You know, hand out. We pick June for our track month to go out and sow the seed of the gospel. You know, it's, it's usually a beautiful, beautiful uh, month. And we've got all kinds of, there's all kinds of fairs and uh, carnivals and all kinds of things where you can go out and hand out a lot of gospel tracks. And we extend it always to July 4th so we can hand out for July 4th. Uh, there's more tracks up here on the bench. If you need some, there's some in the back, and there's always a bunch down in our um, library downstairs. Um, and also our um, Bible school is coming up in July. Our, our postcards are here for the Bible school. So get, get some of those, get a stack of those, and as you're handing out tracks, hand out something for Bible school um, so young people can come and hear the gospel. Um, our track total um, up to this week, and it's probably more than that, but right now 6,079 tracks. So praise Praise the Lord for you and your work that you're doing for the Lord. If you would take your Bibles this morning and turn to Luke chapter 17, and we will read verse 32 for our text. Take your Holy King James Bible and turn to Luke chapter 17, and we'll read verse 32 for our text. This verse is only three words long, 16 letters, yet I would say it is vital for us to understand today. It was spoken over 2,000 years ago, but it is still very applicable for our time and for our generation. In Luke chapter 17, verse 32, the three words are, remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we love Thee. We're thankful, Lord, to be here this morning. We're thankful, Lord, for Your love for us. We're thankful, Lord, for the Bible that we can open and we can read. We just uh, pray thy Holy Spirit would be in this service. Lord, help us, Lord, not to come here and worship without thy Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, not to come here and try to have church without reading your word. Help us, Lord, not to come here and not to sing these songs from our heart and just with our lips. But help us, Lord, to come with a pure heart, uh, purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to be looking for your return. Help us, Lord, to remember Lot's wife. Help us, Lord, not to look back but to look up. And we pray this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. In Luke chapter 17, verse 32, the three words are, Remember Lot's wife. Uh, the title of the message this morning is, Don't look back, look up. Don't look back, look up. Jesus, if Jesus spoke directly to you this morning, let me tell you, if Jesus spoke directly to you this morning and asked you to remember something, what would you do? You know, if he said, listen, and he called you by name and said, I want you to remember something. I want you to remember someone. I want you to remember an event. What would you do? I think I would commit it to memory. I think I would go about memorizing what it was that God wanted me to remember. I would want to mark it in my book. I'd want to write it down. I would want to memorize it. But God doesn't tell us just to memorize his word. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. We are to memorize God's word. But we're not just to memorize it, we're to hide it in our heart. And the Bible says we're to meditate upon the Word of God. In other words, once you've hit it in your heart, once you've hit it in your mind, you need to meditate on it until you understand it so that you can obey it. I think if God spoke to me and said, Brother Nathan, I want you to remember something, I think I would memorize it. And I think I would meditate on it and try to understand what the point was that he was trying to convey to me. We are not told to simply memorize scripture, but we are told to memorize and to meditate. Jesus only used the word remember eight times in scripture. Eight times Jesus used the word remember in scripture, but only one time in referring to a person. And that is in Luke 17, 32, when he says, remember Lot's wife. He didn't say to remember Lot. You know, think about it. Lot was a righteous man. God called Lot a righteous man. He didn't say to remember Abraham. Abraham was the father of the faithful. He said, remember Lot's wife. To do that, we need to go back and hear the story of Lot's wife. I'm not going to tell it to you this morning. I'm going to read it to you out of the word of God. Turn to Genesis chapter 19, verse 1 through 26, and we'll read this. It's a lengthy reading, but I want you to hear what God is asking us to remember when Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Genesis chapter 19, verse 1 through 26. And there came two angels to Sodom and even. Listen to this. And there came two angels to Sodom and even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, 
Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Get up. I'm sorry. Let me start over with verse 14. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, the angel hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy Two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed." And Lot said unto them, O, oh, not so, my lord. Behold now, thy servant, behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. O, oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this, all, this thing also. So I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was rising upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. He said, remember Lot's wife for a very specific warning to his people. We have to go back to the story, and as we read the story, we have to remember what Jesus was trying to convey to his people. You know, Jesus said this to his people. He said, remember Lot's wife. The Southern Baptist Convention would do well to remember Lot's wife. There has been many a denomination that Jesus has warned that they have left their first love. Is that even possible? Is that even possible for a church to leave its first love? Well, Jesus said it was. Jesus said, and Jesus, listen, Jesus never, ever gave a warning where there was no danger. When Jesus said, be careful because you've left your first love, he's given you a warning, an actual warning, that you should be careful not to leave your first love. Jesus said in Revelation 2, 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Evidently, the Southern Baptist Convention has left their first love, and they have forgotten to remember Lot's wife. According to News Division, published June 22nd, that was yesterday, 2019, 
The Southern Baptist Convention has chosen a gay-affirming pastor as their conference president for next year's annual meeting. It blows my mind how a church could take something that is sin and okay it and affirm it and say this is okay. When they've done that, they have left the rails and they've derailed themselves and they have left the word of God behind and they've gone their own direction and God warns them and says, listen, you need to remember Lot's wife. You need to repent. All through history, we have been, there have been local church assemblies there have been whole denominations that have been derailed. You think about the Southern Baptist Convention has been derailed. It has gone the wrong way. The Methodist, there's many groups of Methodists who have gone the wrong way. Lutherans, almost every denomination at some point has gone the wrong direction and part of them have steered off into worldliness. They brought the world into the church and they have catered to the world. They have forgotten to remember Lot's wife. They have sold out to the world. And God calls to his remnant. There are those in this church, I'm sure in the Southern Baptist Convention, I'm sure in some of the Methodist churches, I'm sure in some of the Lutheran churches, I'm sure in some of all the denominations, there's a remnant of God's people and God calls to them, come out of her, my people, lest ye be partakers of her plagues. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. And he calls to the remnant, come out of her, my people, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. It's time for God's elect to come out of liberal churches this morning. It's time for God's elect to pull themselves away from what they feel is a comfortable place, when that comfortable place has turned from the word of God to fables. Any church that does not call out sin but comforts people in sin is not to be called a church any longer. Amen? Amen? We all understand a hospital that would comfort the sick and never bring the sick to a physician would be uh, hypocritical to call themselves a hospital. We understand as a Christian church, we want sinners to come in and hear the gospel because we have the great physician. Amen? Amen. We want sinners to come and hear the gospel. We want to preach the gospel to them because we too were sick and we understand that we have a physician that will heal them that will save them. We have a physician who's never failed. Amen? It don't matter what kind of, you know, if it was a hospital and someone was sick and, and, and we liken Jesus to a great physician, we could say, I don't care what kind of sickness you have. You could have a cold, you could have a flu, you could have cancer. We have the physician that can heal you. I don't care what kind of sin you got yourself into. I don't care if, you, I don't care if you just, you're a liar or a drunkard or a thief or a homosexual. Come to Jesus. Amen? Amen? But he won't leave you the way you were. He'll heal you. He'll save you. And he'll put you on a new path, a path to real health. We have the great physician, praise God. That's what track month is about. This church should be excited about going and sharing the gospel with the world. We are fulfilling the prophecy that the gospel must first be published throughout all the world. God is allowing us to have part, a part in his plan. Amen? That's a good thing. The sick must know their condition so that they can come to the doctor. Today, if you say the word cancer, chills would run through people's minds and their hearts and their bodies. If someone were to say that you have cancer this morning, it would cause you all kinds of physical trouble and turmoil, and it should, rightfully so. But you say to someone, you've got sin in your life, and it's no fear at all. What is wrong? What is wrong is that the church has left their first love. And they're not preaching the truth, and they're not saying, listen, sin is more harmful than cancer. Cancer can kill the body. Sin will destroy your soul. God has called you away from that. He's called you to healing. I want you to pay very close attention this morning to this next statement. Jesus wasn't speaking to the Pharisees. Jesus was not speaking to the lost. Jesus was not speaking to those who were just religious but lost when he said, remember Lot's wife. Jesus was speaking to the true believer. Jesus was speaking to you this morning when he said, remember Lot's wife. It's very important that you understand that because many today don't understand that. Who was the message to? The message was to the church. The message was to his disciples. The message was to the true believer when he said, remember Lot's wife. He was speaking to each and to every one of you. He was speaking to me this morning to remember Lot's wife as a warning. 
not to turn back to the world. Luke 17, verses 28 through 32. Likewise also, likewise also was it in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and the stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him not likewise return back. Remember Lot's wife. Do you see what Jesus is saying when he correlates Lot's, Lot's wife? He's saying there's a time coming in the future, and I want my disciples and I want my true believers to understand there's a time coming in the future when the Son of Man will be revealed. And when the Son of Man is revealed, that is not a time to go back and get things from the world. That is a time that you've already, there's a time in your life when you've been born again, when you've given your life to Jesus Christ, and when you have a heart for God, there's no room for anything else. Listen, God is a big God, and you put God in your heart, everything else has to leave. You can't have God and this sin. You have to choose one or the other. No man can have two masters. Either you'll serve the one and love the one, or you'll hate the one and despise the other. You cannot have God in your heart and the love of whatever it is. And God was saying to his disciples, Jesus was saying to his disciples, there's a time coming when Jesus will return for his bride. In that day, he which is upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him, not, let him likewise not return back. In other words, don't look back, look up. Amen? Don't look back, look up. We need to remember that the Bible is telling us that there's a time coming when men will eat and they'll drink. And like, the, like they say, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. They're living for the physical world. They're living for the pleasures of this, this season. Not knowing that there's an eternity in heaven. And the Bible says we need to remember Lot's wife. You all say, well, this is a doom and gloom message. This isn't a doom and gloom message. This is the truth. Amen? And there's nothing, there's nothing doom and gloom about this. Jesus is coming back and we as his people should be excited. And we should be about the work of God, passing these tracts out, saying, I love you so much, I want to warn you that there is a judgment coming, but you don't have to be here when it happens. Amen? Amen. You want to hear a doom and gloom message, go listen to the atheist preach. And don't tell me they don't preach. There's atheist preachers all over the world. And they say, we came from nothing, we're going nowhere, and life is meaningless. That is doom and gloom, my friend. There's nothing more doom and gloom than the atheist preacher. I came from nothing, I'm going nowhere, and life is meaningless. God says, you came from somewhere, you're going somewhere, and life has meaning when you're in God. Amen? I just untied my shoelace with my other foot, so if I fall, you'll know why. <laughs> I'm trying to, I don't want to be proud up here because pride goeth before destruction, the Holy Spirit before a fall, and if I step on this other shoelace, I'm going down. This isn't doom and gloom. This church isn't about doom and gloom. This church is about eternity. And our, our hope is not in this world. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in heaven. We've been called out of darkness, out of the darkness of this world into his marvelous light. We should be of all men most joyful. But we as Christians don't need to look back. We need to look up. The Christian dies a temporary life to live eternally. The lost live a temporary life to die eternally. Let me read that again for you. The Christian dies a temporary life. In other words, when you get saved, God says, crucify the flesh and the, and the affections and lusts. Crucify the flesh. That is saying, crucify the things that you want to do for the things of the kingdom of heaven. The Christian dies a temporary life to live eternally. The lost live a temporary life to die eternally. In other words, they say, this is life. Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. And they live their temporary life to the fullest. They do all the things they can that they believe will make them happy. In the end, it makes them sad and depressed and heartbroken. And they die and they have nothing after that. But eternal torment. God says, I called you to something better. We need to take a close look at the history of Lot's wife. Lot and his wife lived in a wicked city. Verse, uh, Luke 17, verse 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat... 
They drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. What is that? That's all physical. It's all physical. There's no spiritual, there's no spiritual, I'm doing this for the kingdom of heaven. This is, I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this right now because I want the pleasures of this life. The Bible says that there's a day coming before Jesus returns that wickedness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. Men will be seekers of pleasure more than seekers of God. Men will do the things that they want to do, whatever they think makes them happy. Lot and his wife lived in a wicked city. Doesn't that kind of a picture of the world where we live today? We live in a wicked city. Lot and his wife were called away from that wicked city. The Bible specifically says that it was as it was in the days of Noah. We hear that all the time. As it was in the days of Noah. As it was in the days of Noah. There was all kinds of wickedness. But it also says, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. Because here you have Noah living righteously in a wicked world, and he's called out of that world. And him and his family get into the ark, and the ark floats above the earth as the earth is being destroyed, and then they brought back down. Well, just like Lot and his wife were called out of a wicked city to go up to the mountains while the judgment of God was falling upon mankind, God has called us, and he says, Remember Lot's wife, church. When you feel tempted to lower the standard of your church house, when you feel tempted to lower the standard of you as the church of the body of Christ, if you feel tempted to lower the standards and say, it's okay for me to drink, it's okay for me to do marijuana now that it's legal, remember Lot's wife. We're not called to enjoy the pleasures of this life for a season. We're called to live holy for God. The Bible says there's a coming a day before Jesus returns that wickedness will abound and God will judge the earth as it was in the days of Lot. Sodom and Gomorrah was specifically judged for the sin of pride. We hear that everywhere today, as if that's a good thing. The Bible never uses the word pride in a, in a positive light. It's always negative. Pride, sodomy, homosexuality, perversion, not repenting but loving sin and hating righteousness. It was, listen, this city, which represents our world today, was a, a city that was not repenting, but loving their sin more than they loved righteousness. They loved the wages of sin. And God called to Lot and to his wife and says, the call to escape. Not only did he call Lot and his wife, he called all of the people of Sodom to escape the judgment that was coming. It wasn't that he just called one man and his family. He called all of Sodom, all of Gomorrah, and all of the cities around there because he loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The call is to escape. Genesis 19.1, And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, arose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face to the ground. In the last days, God is going to send what he calls his two olive trees his two candlesticks, his two witnesses. In Revelation, God also calls them witnesses, and he says in Revelation 11:3, and I will give power unto my two witnesses. You know, God sent two angels. If you remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, at the very beginning of the story, it says he sent two angels. And I think they are a little bit representative of the two candlesticks and the two olive trees that are going to come at the last days to, to give the final call, the final call to escape judgment. It's kind of the final call. You know, Lot and his wife lived in that city, and Lot, the Bible says, lived a righteous life. He was grieved at the sins around him every day. He was grieved at the evil conversation that was going around him. And he lived there as an example that, listen, this world is not the end. It's the beginning. Your life is not, when you die, it's not the end. It's the very beginning of eternity. And he was there to call people to salvation, the two angels are witnesses. They are God's final call to repentance. Men, the men of Sodom were spiritually blind. They were blinded by sin. And the two witnesses in the last day are going to have power. And those who hurt the witnesses, they'll be able to hurt them in like fashion. These two angels came into Sodom, and they wanted to stay in the streets. But Lot said, you can't stay in the streets. This is a wicked place. Come to my house. Like Lot was going to protect these angels. You know, these, these angels. Lot was trying to protect, but it, was, it just shows Lot's heart. Here's Lot. He had a heart for God. He wanted to do what's right. And he saw two strangers. He said, come to my house. I'll protect you. And Lot tries to protect them. And he, the men of Sodom, not just the men, 
The old, the young, and all the people round about came to abuse these men. Wicked. And Lot said, don't be so wicked. Don't do such a wicked thing. God has called you to repent. God has called you to mercy. The blindness was mercy to these people. The angel struck them in with blindness. That was not, that was not judgment. That was mercy. The angels could have struck them dead. The angels just gave them blindness. He said, I'm going to give you a little while to walk around in the dark. As you're walking around spiritually in the dark, I want you to walk around physically in the dark so maybe you'll wake up. So maybe you'll come to your senses. So maybe you'll flee the city like Lot and his wife are going to do. God is always calling men to repentance. And there is a final call. It is a picture of salvation that all have sinned, that all have come short of the glory of God. But God has made a way for everyone, everyone to come to him through the blood of Jesus Christ. God has called all to be saved. Repent and believe the gospel. It's the truth. It's all you need to do. Repent and believe the gospel. If you, if, you, if you believe the gospel, that's all it takes to be saved. Only the righteous, though, will be saved from God's judgment. As we remember Lot's wife, we need to remember that only the righteous will be saved from God's judgment. Sodom and Gomorrah are a picture of this wicked world. God's people should be excited about leaving. You know, we should be looking for the return of Jesus Christ we don't know if it's going to come morning. We don't know if it's going to come noon. We don't know if it's going to come at nighttime. There are churches who are dogmatic and say, oh, it's the pre-trib rapture. It's the mid-trib rapture. It is the post-trib rapture. The Bible doesn't give us an exact time. It says, no man shall know the day nor the time wherein the Son of Man cometh. We should not be dogmatic as to the time. What we should be doing is always looking and teaching people to always be looking. Look up. Don't look back. Look up. Don't look back. It's early. Look up. He may come. Don't look back. It's, it's in the middle. Something happens and there's tribulation. The Chinese, the Chinese Christians are facing persecution right now. To them, it could be part of the great tribulation. It's not, but it could be the beginning. Now, who knows? But they're looking up, not looking back. We don't know when Jesus is going to come. We shouldn't be dogmatic. We should have our opinions based on Scripture, be able to talk to people about when we think it's going to be. We might know the season, but we don't know the day or the hour. Sodom and Gomorrah is a picture of this wicked world, and we should be excited about leaving. But even the righteous must continue to follow God. Amen? Amen. This church believes in eternal security. We believe in eternal security. You're in God's hand. Nothing can take you out of God's hand. But we also believe in free will, and we know that God has never chained someone to his wrist. He only wants people to follow him willingly. And you have to make up your mind, I'm going to love God more than I love this world. I'm going to love God more than I love sin. I'm going to love God more than I even love my father and my mother and my brother and my sister. If all the world came against me, I'm following Jesus. Amen? Amen? Young people, you have to, to have a, a, a secure base in this world, to have a sure foundation. There's only one. It's Jesus Christ. You make anything else your foundation, it will crumble. Jesus has to be your foundation. He has to be the rock in your life. And no matter who says it's wrong, you stick with Jesus and you'll enter eternal heaven. Even the righteous must continue to follow God. Genesis nineteen fifteen. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Do you understand what he's saying there? The commandment was to obey. The commandment God gave was to obey. He said, And when the morning arose, the angel hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. The city is going to be destroyed. Listen, if you do not want to be destroyed, you must leave the city. Church, we have to leave the world. We have to leave the world behind. We have to leave Sodom and Gomorrah behind. And we have to go toward Jesus and keep walking with Jesus and talking with Jesus all the way to heaven. We cannot stay in the world and think that we're going to be spared from judgment. And we can't allow others who think that that's true to go on believing that. We have to tell them the truth. God loves you. He loves you so much he sent his son to die for you. But if you want to choose your sin over him, you won't get in. It's that simple. The commandment was to obey. God gave one commandment. That was, don't look back. In Genesis 19, 17, he said to this, he said, And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. I've given you one commandment, one truth to remember. Don't look back, look up. 
Church, he says to you, remember Lot's wife? This is not a message of doom and gloom. This is a message of hope. Our hope is in the Savior. If our hope was in this life, in this life alone, that would be doom and gloom. But it is not. It is in Jesus Christ. We came, we came from God. Those of us who are born again are going back to God. God doesn't want His people to be ignorant. That is why He gives us His word of truth. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what we need to be. We can't be, we can't be constantly studying the world and be acceptable to God as far as a workman that needed not to be ashamed. If we're constantly studying the world and the things of the world and we're always on our computers, we're always on our phone, we're never in the word of God, we, we'll be ashamed before God. I'm not saying we're not going to be lost. I'm just saying, listen, this, this life is not about physical. It's about spiritual. We have a physical body. We have physical needs. But God has called us to crucify the flesh and the affections and what? The lusts. The things that were drawn against, the things that war against our soul. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Listen to this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And it says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. There are those who say there is no rapture. The Bible never uses the term rapture. But here it says, uh, that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That means there's a rapture. That means the church is leaving this world at some point. Those who are alive with Christ and not dead, when the Lord comes back, when the trump sounds, they're going up. You can call it whatever you want. If you want to be biblical, call it the catching away. Caught up. But rapture is okay with me. So what's going to happen. This is our hope. This is our wedding day. You know, who's not, who, listen, who of you who's married did not look forward to your wedding day? If you didn't, it was a shotgun wedding. <laughs> Anyone here who, who has been married, you go back and you think about the time that you were dating and the time that you uh, set the date and you look forward to that time with great anticipation. The church today is not looking, as I look as a whole, I'm not talking about our church I'm talking about the whole of America is not looking forward to the wedding day. Why? Because they've got something else in their heart. They've got some Sodom and Gomorrah in their heart. And they would be ashamed at Christ's coming, not blessed by his coming. Who of us did not look forward to our wedding day? This is what Jesus is talking about here. When the Son of Man shall be revealed, it's going to be the wedding day for the bride of Christ, the church. The bride that would look back. Listen to me. A bride that would be walking up the aisle to meet her bridegroom who looks back at her boyfriends as she's walking up the aisle is unfit for her husband. That's what's happening. Remember Lot's wife? That's what happened to Lot's wife. She was being called away. She was being called. It was a wedding day. It was getting out of Sodom day. It should have been a joyful day. It should have been a happy day. I'm getting out of Sodom. I'm getting out of Gomorrah. I'm getting out of this wicked place. And she's looking back at the old boyfriends as she's walking the aisle. Unfit for marriage. Unfit for the marriage of Christ. God told Lot and his wife, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. In other words, don't look back, look up. When Jesus comes to take his bride, will you be looking up or looking back? That's the question this morning. Jesus is coming. Are you going to be looking up to meet him? are looking back at those past boyfriends, those past girlfriends of the world. Remember Lot's wife, Genesis chapter 19, verses 23 through 26. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities 
and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. That's a sad, that's a sad commentary. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife for a reason. He wasn't talking, he wasn't talking to the hypocrites. He wasn't talking to the Pharisees. He wasn't talking to the lost. He was talking to the church. He was talking to you. He was talking to me when he said, remember Lot's wife. It was her wedding day. She should have been excited to get out of there, and she looked back at what she should have been happy to give up for Jesus. But she looked back. She was literally saved from destruction, but halfway between safety and Sodom, she chose Sodom. Her treasure was in Sodom, so her heart was unwilling to leave. Lot was a very rich man. You remember Lot and, and Abraham? Lot had herds. He had herdmen. He had cattle. He had great riches to the point that the land could not hold Abraham and it could not hold Lot together. Lot had great riches when he went into Sodom. But think about when he left. He had a wife and two daughters. He left some son-in-laws behind. I don't know if he left some sons behind. Whatever he left behind was back there. But he didn't take his cattle. He didn't take his herdmen. He didn't take his riches with him. When he left, he left alone. You can, you can amount all the riches you want in this world. You can be powerful. You can be rich. You can be successful. You've got to leave it all behind. You can't take it with you. Many say, many say listen, you can have your sin in heaven too. You can, you can walk the broad road to heaven. Jesus said, no. Remember Lot's wife? Lot went in rich. He left rich. He left a richer man. He gave up all the stuff that the world would say, oh, how could you leave all that stuff behind, all that stuff? I would go back and get it. That's what Lot's wife was thinking. Lot said, I don't need it. I didn't want to be here in the first place. I want to go up there where it's safe. Salt, the Bible, represents the redeemed. Did you know that? Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt. Salt in the Bible represents the redeemed. Jesus said this, not me. Ye are the salt of the earth. Remember that? Ye are the salt of the earth. Is it possible that the salt could end up worthless? Not according to the modern prosperity gospel of today. They say that's impossible. The salt that's good will always be good. It's not what my Bible says. Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. It represents the redeemed. But Jesus also went on to say in Matthew 5, 13, Ye are the salt of the earth, but the salt have lost its savor. Wherewith shall it be salted? It is, hence, it is hence, thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Here's a pillar of salt that lost her savior. She was no longer good for anything, but to be cast under foot and to be remembered as a byword, as a warning to others. And she stood there as a pillar of salt, reminding the redeemed not to look back at Sodom anymore, but to look forward to Jesus, our Savior, and to look forward to our wedding day, and not to have lust for the world. Jesus was not speaking to the Pharisees. Jesus was not speaking to the lost. Jesus was speaking to the true believer when he said, remember Lot's wife. The last time Jesus used the word remember, and I'm going to close on this. I'm two minutes over, and I know you guys don't care. What I, Sister Edda told me, we have people watch. We have people watch from, from Germany and Switzerland and all over the world we have people watching. And she said that when I said that you guys are not going to, you know, I said something about being, going over, and somebody just, just on the chat thing just went crazy saying, you, you people, you know, it, listen, if you're listening out there, these people don't mind me going over. They're listening intently. We have a wonderful church, and a lot of people say, I wish I could come there, but, you know, they're from all over the place. They can't come to Pekin, Illinois. The last time Jesus used the word remember, and the, in fact, the last time the Holy Bible uses the word remember is in Revelation 3.3. 3. It says this, remember, and he wasn't talking to the lost here. You know, I, 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 I don't understand when God gives a warning, there's always danger. Always. That's a fact. And you will find that every warning in God's word about turning back is always to the true believer. 
He never warns a fake believer about turning back. He never warns a hypocrite about turning back. He never warns the lost about turning back. Every warning about turning back to the world is always aimed directly at who? The church, the true believer. And when he says, remember Lot's wife, he's saying, I want you to ingrain this in your memory. I want you to remember it. It's three words, three words. We can all have it memorized by the end of this service, and it's going to close very shortly. Remember Lot's wife. But not only do we need to remember it, we need to meditate upon it, and we need to think about it, and we need to think, do I have something in my heart? God's big. He wants the whole space. We need to remember Lot's wife and meditate upon that as we go deeper and deeper into church apostasy across the nation. Because the Bible says there's a time coming when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll have itching ears. This church doesn't have that, but we don't ever want to have it. The only way we'll never have it is we remember Lot's wife. To the casual Christian, to the casual Christian who comes once in a while to church, you really think you're going to escape the judgment of this world and not look back? You can't give up one hour a week, two hours a week, three hours a week for God's service. You can't go out and do some work for God. But you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna leave this world and be looking at Jesus as, as the, the bridegroom the whole time and not look back? The mark of the beast is coming at some point in this world. And there are many people who say, well, I would never take that. They're sold out right now. They're sold out right now. If you're sold out now, you will not be able to refuse the mark of the beast. The Bible says if you can't run with the footmen, what are you going to do when the horses show up? The last time Jesus, the last time the Holy Bible used the word remembers in Revelation 3.3, and I'm going to close. He says, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. I'm going to read that again. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard. Remember how you received and you heard? Who's he talking to? He's not talking to the lost. Anybody that says he's talking to the lost is crazy. I, I know he's talking to a dead church. But he said, remember how you, remember how you received and heard? And hold fast and repent. In other words, repent. Turn around. You are going toward the world. Turn back to Jesus. Remember Lot's wife. Don't ever turn back. Turn to Jesus. Look, don't look down. Look up. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Basically, Jesus is saying in Revelation 3.3, 3, remember Lot's wife. I don't know how far Lot's wife got away from the city. Does it really matter? But I, I know something. I know something. She left the city. Think about it. She left the city of destruction. She left the city of destruction. How far did she get? Genesis 19, 23 through 26. And we'll close. Genesis 19, 23 through 26. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she be became a pillar of salt. In other words, uh, it, it, I'm, not, I'm not saying this is the way it is. This is the way I see it. Lot and his wife and his two daughters went to Zoar. And as it's raining down, they were in Zoar when the, when, the rain, when the fire started to come down upon. Okay, so I see Lot and his wife and his daughters in Zoar. They hadn't quite made it to the mountains yet, but they'd made it to Zoar, and it started raining fire and brimstone from heaven. And I see Lot standing with his face away from Sodom and Gomorrah, shielding his wife and his daughters away from looking at Sodom and Gomorrah. And it says, behold, his wife looked back from behind him as he's trying to protect them from looking back. Your parents cannot protect you from looking back. Your friend, your pastor, cannot protect you from looking back. All he can do is say, here's the truth. We're going to look this direction because this is where Jesus is. We're not looking back at the world. But ultimately, it comes up to one person's decision. Each and every person has to make a decision not to look back, but to remember Lot's wife.
I hope you're saved this morning. I hope you're on your way to heaven. I hope you look up and not look back. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you do. We thank you, Lord, for a, a Bible-believing church. We thank you, Lord, where the, uh, the gospel can be preached and people are not offended at the gospel, but, Lord, they want to follow you closer and closer every day. Uh, pray, Lord, that you'll help me and help everyone here to remember what you've told us to remember, to remember Lot's wife, and, Lord, to realize that it applies to us directly, not indirectly, but directly. Help us, Lord, to remember Lot's wife. Help us, if we're tempted to look back at the world, help us, Lord, to remember Lot's wife and not to look back for anything. Help us, Lord, to go forward with Jesus, through Jesus. We know it's only through the blood of Jesus that anyone can be saved. Help us, Lord, to stay there. Help us, Lord, not to even be tempted to turn back to the world. But as you have called us to be holy, so help us to be holy in all manner of conversation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ask for a song of invitation this morning.